Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now's a great time to grab your pens and weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already, because the service starts in 90 seconds. We are so happy to see you today, CE family, and I am looking forward to today's impacting service. During the service, you may have some questions, comments, or prayer requests, so please go to churchexperience.tv slash connect, or you can pull out your camera app and scan the QR code to connect with us, or you could even hit that subscribe button if you always want to know what's going on here at CE. We're always glad to hear from you get back to you and be praying for you but guess what time it is it is time to spend some time worshiping god through these songs so let's jump in participate and let god speak to us through this time This is what living looks like 
This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We see you break down every wall. We watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our creation cry, God, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch a giant fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, but the mercy's wide, because you're good on your promise. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it. And the chaos fell in line. Well, I know, cause I've seen it in my life. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I wanna be on it. It's a narrow road, the tide is high, cause you're part of the water. You're good on your promise. You're good on your promise. You said your love will never give up. You said your grace is always enough. You said your heart would never forget or forsake. You said I'm saved, you call me yours, you said my future's full of your hope, you never fail, so I know that you'll never fail me. You said 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, your word that is timeless, your word that covers us and protects us, the promises you've given us, Lord, your words are powerful, and Lord, we are so thankful for all the words that you've given us, all the words you put on our hearts, and all the words that you've said in your truths, Lord. And we pray that your word goes on forever and ever. And it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Well, we're in week two of our road trip series, and uh, as we, this, this series is one of the favorite ones that we do. All the church experience campuses are, are doing this exact same thing today, and so you are sharing in what's going on around the, uh, the country. We have campuses in uh, different parts of the country, and so uh, this is one of our favorite things to do. Pastor Brandon is the founding pastor of Church Experience, that movement, and uh, he and his family do this every year, and they go up to different places. Different, and this year, they're going up to the, the, the eastern seacoast, I think. So today, I think they're going to be in Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. Anybody been to Savannah? Yeah, it's a beautiful place up there. And so I want you to give him your attention. He's going to preach the first 15 minutes, and I'll do the last 15 minutes today. And uh, we're going to talk about what God wants us to do to step out, to step out, to step out. To do what? Step out. Step out. All right, let's watch this together. Welcome back to our annual Road Trip Teaching Series. And we love this teaching series because every week we combine live local preaching with creative teaching videos filmed in inspiring locations. Last week, for our first week, we kicked it off in St. Augustine, Florida. Today, we're here in beautiful and historic Savannah, Georgia. And we're so excited about all the history that's here in the city. But we're also looking at some biblical history as we study through some epic stories and the book of Joshua every week. So let's kick it off with historic Savannah, Georgia. Savannah is the oldest and the first city in the state of Georgia. Savannah was the strategic port city in the American Revolution during the American Civil War. It was founded in 1733 by General James Edward Oglethorpe of Great Britain. Savannah was organized into grids and has been nicknamed America's first planned city. Savannah had originally 24 squares to the city with still 22 of them remaining in existence today. Parts of the 1990s hit film, Forrest Gump, were filmed here in Savannah. You might remember the famous bench scene where Tom Hanks' character talks about how life is like a box of chocolates. 
you never know what you're gonna get. Savannah is a fascinating city with a long and interesting history that attracts millions of visitors each year. And speaking of millions of people traveling to a destination, let's talk about the nation of Israel headed to their promised land in Joshua chapter three. Let's pick up the story in God's word from Joshua chapter three. Joshua chapter three, verse five. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and they went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so they may know I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. So Joshua says, get ready. We're heading into the promised land. Prepare yourself now. Consecrate yourselves. In other words, formally prepare yourself for a divine purpose. Are you doing that? Are you getting ready for the great things God has ahead for you in your future? Maybe you're single and you're so busy looking around that you're not preparing your heart now for what God wants to do next when you meet that special person. See, we wanna get ready now for the things that we hope God will do in the future. Maybe you have big dreams for God to do great things through your life. That, that's amazing. But you wanna do the small things now with great excellence to get yourself ready. And so Joshua says, prepare now for the great future that God has ahead for you. Maybe you were a really active kid. People were always telling you, hey, act your age. <laughs> but I don't want you to act your age. I want you to act like the person you hope to grow into, the person that you want to mature into. Prepare yourself now for the future that God has for you, the person that he wants you to be. And just like these amazing cobblestone streets here in Savannah, Georgia, you want to brick by brick, prepare yourself now, step by step for the future that God is building in your life. You want to develop healthy relationships. You want to form your character to be honoring to God. You want to strengthen your self-discipline. You want to pursue God with passion and prayer. Get yourself ready now for the great things God has for your future. So the lesson is get ready now for the move of God you want to see in the future. Get ready now for the move of God you want to see in your future. So are you doing that? Are you preparing yourself one brick at a time, one day at a time? Get ready, because we're moving forward. So we pick up with the Israelites preparing to enter their promised land. The Jordan River separates them from the vision that God has for them but they're ready, they're ready to move forward to make progress. Let's pick up the story in Joshua chapter three, beginning in verse 14. Joshua chapter three, verse 14. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. While the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. What an amazing story. So the Israelites are prepared. They're ready to move into the promised land, but there's a serious problem. The Jordan River stands in their way and they can't get past it. Normally it's about a hundred feet wide, but here and now because it's flood stage, some believe this was about a half mile wide, maybe longer. And there's no way they're getting this massive nation through this river over into the promised land. So they have an obstacle that's standing in the way that's preventing them. You know, they say that experience is the best teacher. And that's true most of the time. Experience can teach us a lot of things, what to do, things that we need to learn from past experience. But one of the problems with experience is sometimes when we've got stuck, sometimes when we haven't made it through to the other side, that experience in our past can shape our future decisions. It can cause us to back down and back away from steps that we should take to move forward. And so perhaps there's some things in your past that caused you to back down, back away, caused you in fear or worry to not make it to the other side. Well, don't let the past experience predict your future because it causes you to not take that courageous step forward. Well, the nation of Israel, they want to move forward and God's gonna help them because God's got power to help you when you feel surrounded, when you're up against serious obstacles, when you're facing an addiction that you can't overcome, when you're fighting for a victory that you want to see happen, but you don't know how it's gonna happen, God can help you. Because God has this amazing quality called omnipotence. What omnipotence means, here's the definition. It means having unlimited power, being able to do literally anything. And that's today's final lesson. God can, God can. God can accomplish anything. So what is it in your life where you feel stuck? 
where you feel stranded. You can't get through the other side. What's the Jordan River in your life? God wants to help you one step at a time, one day at a time. He wants to help you get from where you are to where you need to be. All he needs from you is to have strong faith in his amazing and unlimited power. God can help you because God can. So we talked about preparing now for what God has next. We've talked about how God can. He can help us accomplish anything, no matter what obstacles stand in our way. So let's take a look at the next part of this story in Joshua chapter 3, verse 17. It says, The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan, and they stood on dry ground, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Man, I love this story because the whole nation, every one of them, walked through this Jordan River that had been flooded, that had been filled with water. They walked through on dry land. And I love that it says the priests were there in the middle. They were there in the middle with the Ark of the Covenant representing God's presence with his people. And because God was there, it gave them confidence to cross over. They would have otherwise wondered if that water was going to start flowing again. But they had trust in the middle as they passed through the middle of this river, which normally they wouldn't have been able to do. But because God's presence was there with them, they were able to get to the other side. And you know what? I think we need a faith for the middle too. I think we need a faith in the middle. It's easy to have faith before it started, right? We have a lot of vision, excitement, optimism. And it's easy to praise God afterward, after we've seen the miracle, after things have all worked out how we wanted them to. But what about in the middle? Do you have faith to praise God when you're in the middle of the storm, when you're in the middle of the fight, when you don't know the outcomes? Can you still give God praise when you don't know how things are gonna go? See, they had a faith in the middle, right there in the middle of the river as God's presence was right there with them in the middle of it. And we need a faith in the middle too, a faith that trusts God while we're in the middle of that storm, a faith that trusts God in the middle of the battle, a faith that trusts God in the middle of whatever we're going through, knowing that God can get us through it. He can get us to the other side, just like he did with the Israelites as they crossed over on dry land through what was the Jordan River into their promised land. And God can help you too. Do you have a faith in the middle? Are you praising God no matter what you're going through? See, here's the lesson. When God is in the middle, we can get to the other side. When God is in the middle, we can get to the other side. So we're here in Savannah, Georgia, which is a thriving city. It's beautiful, it's filled with people, it's amazing. But it wasn't always that way. In 1820, it looked bad. They had just been hit with a devastating fire that burned down half the city. And this was the second fire like that that had happened in a short period of time. Also in 1820, they were hit with an outbreak of yellow fever, which killed about a tenth of the population of Savannah. It looked pretty bad. The future looked dark. But you know what? The city rebuilt. People pressed in. They moved forward. And now they have a thriving city filled with life. And sometimes things look dark. It doesn't look like we can get through what we're in the middle of. And the nation of Israel, they came up against this Jordan River. They didn't know how they were going to get through. It was flooded. There was no way across. And they had a nation that needed to get to that promised land. But they trust God and they had a faith in the middle. And they were able to get from where they were to where they needed to go. This reminds me so much of the faith that we have in Jesus. They crucified him on that cross and he died for our sins. He gave his life so we can have eternal life when we place our faith in him. And because Jesus died for us, we can have eternal life through him because of what he accomplished. But when he died on that cross, his followers thought that was the end. They scattered. They thought it was over, but it wasn't over. You and I know the rest of the story. Jesus resurrected and he came back to life. And our whole faith is built on this idea that when things seem bad, when things are at their worst, God is preparing to accomplish his best. So trust that even when life is difficult, even though you're surrounded, even though you're outnumbered, even though the obstacles are high, God can help you get through, just like he did with the Israelites. They saw that Jordan River, but they had faith, and God helped them through it to the other side. And God will help you too as you continue to trust in him. Right on. so encouraging today, isn't it? We all face things and going through things, and God can help us get through those things. I want to continue on just a little bit here and talk about stepping out. You know, curiosity is one of the elements that can turn uh, an average person into a legend. Just curiosity. Um, it's an essential trait in every 
that every single explorer who has ever had, they always had curiosity. Um, people who set out to discover new things are fascinated with the discovery of the unknown. And they, they ask questions about how this works and, and what could be. And this, they have just curiosity about them. Something in them says that there's, there's more. Something in them says that I long for something that I don't currently have. That's how people who have changed the world have actually changed the world because of this curiosity stirring inside their heart. One of those that we are familiar with is the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus. He's, his voyages across the Atlantic Ocean led to the discovery of the new world. And only would have happened if he was curious what was on the other side of the world. See, when everybody else said the world was flat... His theory was, no, the world is round. And his theory made a lot of cynicism, and he got made fun of by a lot of people. I mean, it's hard for us to even imagine that in this day and age, but, but that's what they used to think. And people laughed at him and made fun of him because he believed that there was more than what could have been discovered. When Queen Isabella, the Queen of Spain, commissioned him and gave him some money because he needed money to finance his journey, and so she believed, okay, I'll give you some money to, 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 uh, to go explore. And he set out with this grand idea of discovering something beyond what had currently been discovered. But that takes a little bit of a paradigm shift in his thinking because he believed it's out there, but is it really out there? And oh, by the way, I need a crew, and I'm going to bring a crew. And oh, by the way, guys, will you come on with me and let's go see if there's anything beyond the edge? We could go to the edge and fall right off, but I think it's round, so I think we're good. Will you guys come along? Well, sure, I guess I'm up for that. I mean, there just has to be something in somebody, a curiosity, to, to take all the risk, to put all the logical reasoning aside and say, no, I want more. I want to go see if there's more. What's amazing is that we know that they did discover the new world, but suddenly... It just became regular, commonplace for people to go back and forth from Spain to this new land now that we know as, uh, as America. It became commonplace. That journey that at first seemed so incredible and just seemed such a, a risk, and can we really do it? After a while, it just became like, yeah, no big deal. We just go back and forth, back and forth. When Columbus discovered the new world, he, he found, you know, new spices and silver and, and gold and all the beauty of, of the American shores. But for Columbus, he still was not satisfied with just discovering the new world. Something in him continued to yearn for more. And even after he discovered America or discovered the shoreline, he went out and discovered more places. He wasn't done. He kept going. He would not sit back long. He, he would Go out and find another place and, and another place. And what, what, what's over here? And, and wonder what if I sail down there? And, and what's down here? But in the nation of Spain, the mystery of, of sailing and exploring began to dissipate. The sovereigns of Spain became more interested in just going back and forth to a place that they had already known before. From Spain to America, America back to Spain. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. What was once thought impossible, what was once thought as a non existent place, just became a regular journey back and forth. In other words, they were more interested in settling than discovering. They just wanted to, to be regular. They, they just wanted to be normal. They wanted to be average. You know, they were content with that. And I'm afraid that that type of contentment, that type of just wanting to be regular, just wanting to be normal, sometimes creeps into our walk with God. See, at first, we, we, we don't even know that the spiritual world even exists or if we do, it's like barely. We don't even understand it. It's, it's new and exciting. And suddenly, you know, we, we, we find Jesus and we find this new life in Christ. And man, everything's new. Everything's good. Everything's great. God's doing some amazing things. 
We've discovered a place that we've never been to before. But if we're not careful, that new world can just become a regular journey back and forth to church, experiencing an average Sunday, back and forth. We might pick up some spices, some silver, some gold nuggets from God's word, you know, some blessings from the house of God, you know, week in and week out, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the same place, never realizing that God never intended for us to stop discovering new places in Him. Places we have yet to be, places we have yet to discover. God doesn't want us to settle for just Christian colonization over exploration. Spiritually speaking, there needs to be something in us, something in us, a curiosity that yearns for more, hungers for more, something that stirs up in our heart to say, God, there's got to be more than just coming and going back and forth to this place called church. There's got to be more than that. Occasionally, there needs to be those moments in our walk with God where we get desperate for a place we've never been before. God, I want more of you, yearning for an experience with God we've never had before. It doesn't matter how long you've been walking with God, whether this is your first year of walking with God, your first day of walking with God, you've been walking with God for 50 years, there is still more to discover. There's a whole new world, spiritually speaking. It's out there. It exists. If we won't settle and be satisfied with just normal. You see, I believe that when we get satisfied with just settling, we, we get settled in our, our walk with God. We, we settle in the valley of the common. We settle in the, in the plain of the plain. Church doesn't have to be plain. Church doesn't have to be average. Sunday mornings don't have to be just routine. Are you with me, church? Church doesn't have to be just common. I mean, are we living in common times? Seriously, think about what's going on in our world today. Are we living in common times? We need more than just common services with just little talks from the Bible. A few songs sprinkled in here and there. A few funny moments here and there, right? We just leave and come back the next week, leave and come back the next week, leave and come back the next week, and it's just commonplace, back and forth, back and forth. What once in your life was, was exciting, what once in your life was, wow, I'm mean, discovering new things in God has just become common and routine, back and forth. You've, you've lost a hunger for more. Do we come on Sunday and we say, God, I want more of you. I'm hungry for more of you. I don't want to just settle. I want you to wreck my heart today. I want you to turn my world upside down today. I want you to speak to me today. I want to hear your voice today. I want to go further today. I don't want to just get excited about a few of my favorite worship songs. I want to get overwhelmed by the presence of God in this place. Are you with me today? God, I want you to drive me to my knees if necessary. Break my heart if necessary. Break me to tears until there's nothing holding me back from more of you. I want to get so deep in your presence where I discover a place I have not known before. I'm telling you, that place exists. There's a place where all that we long for is waiting out there just to be discovered in God. That's one of the beauties about God. It's so basic and simple that little children can understand the concepts that we're teaching him right now. But he's so vast and so big that the greatest theologians and people who spend their entire life studying God's word and, and studying God never reach the end of his being. There's more. There's more. Again, here in Joshua chapter 3, God's people, the Israelites, are headed to a new destination, the promised land, the, the place they have never been before. And I want to just re reread these scriptures a little bit. Joshua 3, verse 1 says, Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out. Say set out. So they set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan. They camped there before crossing over. Now, we're not going to look at all of Israel's history. Pastor Brandon brought up some of the history already. 
But let's just say the people had a history with this place, Shittim. It was here in past generations where they fell into sin. They're, they're on the banks of the Jordan. The promised land's on the other side. And they get to a place where they're, 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 they're getting ready to cross. But there's sin in the camp. There's sin going on. And so in past generations, God punishes them. That's where the whole 40 years of wandering comes into play. A whole generation of people uh, waits to, 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 to cycle out. The people became satisfied with less than what God had promised And so here we have them back at the same place again. Not sure exactly why, but maybe to test them one more time before they crossed over. And so now it's the last place they've camped before entering the promised land. And Joshua's saying, hey, everyone, get ready to go. Verse 2, look at it on the screen. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. And let's just stop there for a moment. The Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. It contains sacred relics of when God made his covenant with the people of Israel and, and Abraham. It also represented a place of atonement for the sins of, of people, the mercy seat. So in a way, it's kind of a foreshadowing to Jesus and taking our sins upon him. And so Joshua's instruction is when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, when you see God's presence and, and the Levitical priest carrying this Ark, in other words, when God is on the move, you're to what? Set out. Say it with me. Set out. Come on, say it again. Set out. Set out from the place and go after it. I love that phrase. Go after it. In other words, go after God. When you see God on the move, go after it. Go after all he's promised. Go after all he's commanded us. Go after the way that he's asked us to live. Come on, when you see God on the move, I want you to go after him with all you've got. Now look at verse 4. It says, then you will know which way to go. Since what? You have never been this way before. There was more. In other words, there, there's more to discover. I want to take you to a place you've never been before. There's more. More to discover, more to ex explore, more to know, more to experience with God. You think you know, but you have no idea all there is to discover in God. There's more. He wants to take you further. Come on, how many believe that today? There's more. Do you believe that? There's more? There's more to discover today? Is there anything yearning in your heart for more of God? Do we just want to camp here on the shore of the river where it's comfortable and, and familiar? Do we, do we just want to settle for Christian colonization rather than exploration in God? Do you just want to settle in our walk with God? Like we just want to get saved and, and do our little journey back and forth to church, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth every week. And we don't go any deeper with God. We don't explore any further. We don't get, grow any mightier in the spirit. We don't go any deeper in our worship to him. Our prayer life doesn't get any more powerful. It's just like our routine back and forth. Come on now, there's a place in God that is beyond the norm. I'm telling you, it's there. Are you going after it? God says, if you will seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, are you seeking him for more today? See, history records that Columbus would actually go out on the bow of the ship and squint his eyes looking for a new horizon. Looking. And see, he learned to do what only a few sailors and navigators knew how to do at that time, and that was how to navigate by the sun. And he would spend hours on the bow of the boat, squinting his eyes, looking at the sun, looking for new horizons out there. I know it's out there. I know it's out there. I know it's out there. Just keep going. I know it's out there. I'm going after it. And he'd spend hours navigating by the sun. You can imagine staring into the sun, squinting into the sun looking for new horizons. 
And toward the later years of his life, this is amazing, he would squint his eyes so much looking for new horizons that later in his years of life, he actually did lose his sight. He, he became pretty much nearly blind. His eyes were affected by navigating by the sun, staring into the sun. He kept looking for a new place, looking for more, squinting and peering for the unknown, longing for it, even after he had lost his sight. He would still have this curiosity of more. Most people thought he was crazy for thinking that there was something more out there. They were the ones that were content with just what had already been discovered, but not him. He always kept looking for the new horizons. What if we came to church like that? What, what if we came to church looking for new horizons in God? What if we came to church and, and we began squinting until we became blind explore, explorers to the things of God, walking by faith, not by sight anymore? Do we have eyes that are squinting, looking for new horizons with God, looking for more of Him to discover? Or again, are we just satisfied with this comfortable? The church world in general, I think, a lot of times just says be satisfied. Really, in all honesty... Just be satisfied. Just go to church and go home. Go to church and go home. Go back and forth. Don't get too spiritual. You might look a little weird to people, so don't get too spiritual. Don't go against the grain too much. You know, you might, you might lose a friend or two over that. You might have to sacrifice too much. You might have to give something up in order to really pursue God with all your heart. So, so don't really go all that far out. Just be comfortable. Just a little bit will do you. Just a little bit will get you into heaven. God doesn't call us to sit there. God doesn't call us to just be comfortable. But what if there's a place? What if there's a place that the average church doesn't get to? What if there's a place that the average Christian doesn't even realize exists? And if we're squinting and looking and pursuing for the new horizons in God, I believe God wants to take you to a place that you have not yet known. We're called to be better than normal. I believe we're called to be more than just average. More than just regular church and regular services. I, I, I don't want our church to settle for regular. I don't want to just settle for normal. I want us to be pursuing God's best. I want us to be pursuing everything God has for us as a church. To never lose that. I mean, it's so easy in the beginning. I mean, you, some of you don't even realize the, the, the stories we've started from and, and just how we've grown from just my little living room into moving into the movie theater and all the different things that have gone into that. I don't want us to ever lose the exploring spirit. Even if after we get established, even down the road when we get a building, I don't ever want to lose. There's more. There's more. God has more. I don't want average prayers, average worship, average sermons, average dedication, average devotions. I'm telling you, church, there is something more that most people aren't willing to discover. They're willing to stay on the shore. They're willing to wait on the other side and not willing to cross over. They're content. There's more. I believe God wants to take us beyond. And it starts with believing, a curiosity, a yearning. Maybe there is more. Maybe there is. I don't want us to become satisfied. See, God's done some amazing things. We've seen God transform lives around us. We've seen some amazing things. We've had amazing services, you know. I know some of you have testimonies within this last year, how God has changed your life and transformed your life just through, through this last year, what God has done in your life. Amazing testimonies. There's a, there's a lot to celebrate. 
And we thank God for all that he's done. But I'm telling you, church, there's more. There's more in your personal walk with God. There's more to discover. There's more people to reach. There's more people that want to know Jesus and have a relationship with him. There's more. There's new horizons. Is your heart ready for that? There's more. In fact, did you know you, you can have as much as God as you want to have? It's like those buffets, you know, all you can eat. Endless buffets. Come on, who's with me on this? What's going on? God's kind of like that. It's endless. He's limitless. There's more. You can have as much as God as you want to have. Do you have a desire for more? You see, I'm asking for God to stir your soul today. To not be satisfied with average. You're going to have to fight that because the culture says, again, just be average. Just get by. Just a little bit of church and a little bit of world and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. That's not what we're talking about today. I'm talking about all in. I want more. And I know that if I get more of that, of God, what I had to give up won't seem near as important. A longing in our heart for more. Notice again Joshua, what he says to the people in verse 5. It says, Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Now that word consecrate, the Hebrew word is kadesh. And it means to prepare, to get ready for, to be to set apart, to dedicate yourself for a divine purpose. God was telling his people that if you're going to reach new places with me, you're going to have to be ready for it. You have to be set apart for it. And that basically involved two things. The first one is this, personal repentance of every known sin. One of the primary reasons Israel found their way blocked and wandering in the desert for 40 years and why we often find our way blocked and not making progress is the sin in our life. The prophet Isaiah wrote this, Isaiah 59, verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not too short, that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made barriers between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, that he does not hear, so, he does, that, so that he does not hear. You can imagine being on the side of that river. One of the greatest days in history is just the next day, the greatest day, they're crossing over to the promised land, setting out to a new place. And Joshua's commanding them, hey, examine your heart. Examine your life. Confess and forsake any sins. Devote yourself wholly to the Lord. Examine your life. Is there any sin? Because you know the history. Again, the sin is what caused them not to be able to cross generations before. And so God's saying, tell Joshua, tell the people, be ready. Consecrate yourself. Make sure there isn't any known sin, anything that would keep you, anything, a barrier that would keep you from accomplishing what God wants to do and where God wants to take you. The second thing that consecration involves is being spiritually ready, being on spiritual high alert to what God is doing. Consecration in the Old Testament involved things like washing your, your clothes, abstaining from sexual relations, changing your work schedule, among a lot of other things. But they, the idea is to deliberately be ready, deliberately interrupt good and normal functions of life, the normal average things that we do in life, to be ready, to be spiritually alert. So when God's on the move, we're ready to move. See, God was about to do amazing things. Again, he's going to take them to a place they've never been before. And they didn't want to miss it by being involved in the lesser things that they could do at other times. And I know this is, a, this is an issue for us because we've got these, these lists we think we've got to do, we've got to do, we've got to do, we've got to do, we've got to do. But if we're going to consecrate our faith, be ready to go where, where God wants us to go and be ready to move when God wants us to move, some of those lesser things need to be put on hold so that we can be alert, looking for when God moves. Consecration means I will set aside the typical 
and put my spirit in alert mode, in ready mode, to discover new horizon with God. It's willing to set aside routine for spiritual things. So in order for us to be ready, the two things, confess, forsake sins, devote ourselves wholly to the Lord, and number two, be on constant alert, ready for the new horizons God wants to take us in. In other words, to be on the bow of that ship, just like Columbus, looking for the new horizons. I see it. It's out there. Because there's more. How many of you believe there's more? God is a vast God. We have not yet discovered all the mighty, great, powerful things that he wants to reveal to us. I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's nothing wrong with enjoying the blessings of God. Again, God has done some amazing things in our life. God has provided some amazing things in our life, and there's nothing wrong with enjoying those blessings and being thankful for the place that he has brought us to at this point in your walk with him. So long as you don't get stuck there. So long as you continue to have a spirit of curiosity of more of God, a longing, a yearning for more. To have a desire to explore the new horizons. God, if I see you move, I'm going to move. If I hear your voice, I'm going to respond. I'll be ready to step out. I'll be ready to follow. I want to take it to places never gone before. And that, that's kind of an exciting way to live. That, that's kind of looking for the new. That's looking for what's next. That's looking for, for beyond just what is known here. That's pretty good here. This is, this is nice stuff here. But, but man, what's next? What's next? And that's what I love about the, the walk with God. It doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be just routine. It doesn't have to be just mundane. It doesn't have to be just oh, ho-hum here and there. Our jobs are that way, okay? Our jobs are that way, and other things we do in our life are that way. Routine, 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 but not with God. God wants to break you out of those routines, take you somewhere further, take you somewhere you've never been before. I like the quote from the French author, poet, and he's a World War II aviator. This, some of you have heard this quote from Antoine de saint Exupéry. It says this. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up men and women to gather wood, divide the work, and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. I love that. What I'm saying is it's time to long for more of God. If you want to build a church that reaches new horizons, and, and again, I've been saying this for years, this is kind of like a construction zone. We're still building this thing. There's a lot yet to do. If you want to build a church that reaches those new horizons, we can't just be a people that goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We can't. The stakes are too high. And the destination is too great. We can't even be a people that just serves on Sunday morning. I know you got a ministry and you're serving on Sunday morning. That's great. We need more of that. But it can't just be that. Rather, we need to be a people who yearn for a vast and limitless God. To pursue Him with a consecrated life and a spiritually alert heart. I don't want to miss it. I don't think you'll find more until you have a hunger for more. Until you long for it. Until you reach for it. Until you're dissatisfied with where you currently are. Not in an ungrateful way. Again, there's lots to celebrate. But just knowing that with God, there's more. Until you refuse to just settle for average. Man, we can walk into all kinds of churches, and I know, I know there's all kinds of churches. But I'm telling you, there are churches that are stuck in average. And I'm not even sure they know it. And I want us to guard against that. Will you help me do that? Guard against just being average. There's more. 
There's new horizons. Are you with me? Am I preaching to anybody today? Come on. Let's go to the new places. Let's look at the Jordan as possibilities for God to do something more. God can, and he will. The Jordans that you have in your life, you can't even probably think, hey, well, how am I going to get across this? I'm telling you, there's more. And God wants to take you there. Will you bow your head and close your eyes? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your promises. We thank you so much for your word and how you have over the centuries, proven again and again and again and again and again that there's more. There's more of you to discover. So I pray, Father, that you'd help us to not buy into the culture's routine. Help us, Father, to not be a people who just goes back and forth to church, does our thing, and never makes any difference. Give us an explorer's heart. Give us the heart that wants to explore new horizons in our God. Give us a yearning for your vast and endless borders. And I believe that as we walk by faith, not by sight, as we follow your leading, when we see you on the move, we're going to go after it, we're going to set out for it. You're going to take us to amazing places that we can't even imagine right now. So we look forward to those days. Be with us, God. Be with us as we build this church and this community together. And I pray that in Jesus' name. If you're with me, say amen. Amen. Before Usher Team comes forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards, here are a few important things happening with our CE family. Hey, CE fam, we have a few important messages for you. Want a way to meet new people, make lasting friendships, and to connect more with God? We're looking for new life group leaders for our fall kickoff. No life group looks the same, and we'd love to partner with you on the vision God puts in your heart to help more people experience life together in Christ. Want to find out more? Write the word LEAD on your response card and drop it in the bucket when it passes by in just a few moments. As our ushers come forward to collect our response cards and to receive our tithes and offerings, God has done some incredible work in and through our church to reach people with the good news of Jesus. Because of your generosity, we've been able to expand our impact by launching new CE campuses, serve our cities with God's love, and bring God's word to the next generation. We invite you to take a step of faith and give generously and be a part of all that God is doing through church experience. You can give in the offering bucket as it passes by, or better yet, you can set up recurring giving today on our CE website. Thank you for making church possible through your faithful giving. Thank you for being on mission with us to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ.
Listen, it's been an amazing day with you at CE, and you may have made a commitment during the service. We would love to have you reach out and tell us about it just by scanning the QR code. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can scan the same code or go to churchexperience.tv connect. We hope to hear from you. And if you haven't, please check out our CE social media. We have an Instagram, our Facebook, our website, or our app. Make sure you do and go ahead, like I said, and subscribe right below. I've loved our time together and we cannot wait to see you next week.